Now, if you've lived in the Lower Mainland for a while, many of your fondest memories may have occurred in places that are long gone. Well, recently, the locations of nine historic entertainment venues in downtown Vancouver were marked with plaques on the sidewalk, and we joined in this special event. <laughs> More than 100 British Columbians have been honored by the BC Entertainment Hall of Fame since 1994. Based at Vancouver's Orpheum Theatre, the Entertainment Hall of Fame includes a star walk of plaques on Granville Street and a star wall of photos inside the theatre. Vancouver Civic Theatre's Chairman and Hall of Fame President Norman Young spoke about a new category, historic entertainment sites. We, uh we're sitting thinking about the names that we do, because we, we're going to run out of names that deserve to be there. And uh, we thought, well, the places they played are important too. So we came up with a batch that we did recently. The first nine historic venues were honored with an induction ceremony that started at the Orpheum Theater. Local band leader and Hall of Fame member, Del Richards and his quartet, performed throughout the festivities. The celebrants boarded buses waiting to take them to the former Pender Street location of the first venue to be honored. Sidewalk plaques commemorate the location of each historic site. The Arctic Club was a prominent private establishment owned by a pair of the city's top producers, Ken Stauffer and nephew Bob Minton. Attending was Doug Minton, who at the young age of 16 was learning to ten bar under the eye of his father. And all of a sudden I was shaking a drink and he grabbed me by the collar, said, don't talk to me, uh, don't talk back, just get your jacket off and your apron off and go home and I'll tell you about it later. And it turned out that a very good friend of his on the dry squad had phoned him to say that they had a report of an underage person working in the club and of course my dad wouldn't do a thing like that. I'm sure wherever the rest of the family are that uh, they're looking down and enjoying it too. The Cave Supper Club, formerly located on Hornby Street, was the next site to be honored. Often known as Hollywood North, the cave hosted many big star acts from 1937 to 1981. Accomplished band leader and Hall of Fame recipient, Bobby Hale, reminisced about his time at the cave. My band played all the shows, and I want to tell you, as, as a musician, to play the best acts in the world, with arrangements written by the best arrangers in the world, was short of miraculous to do the job and get paid for it every night. And you had to be not only a good musician, you had to be a great musician, because you didn't know what you were going to face. It could be classical, it could be jazz, it could be anything. And we played some very, very tough shows. But we also had a lot of fun and hanging out with people like Sonny and Cher and all those stars in, in the early rock days. I was a cigarette girl at the cave in the mid-60s. And it was just the most wonderful job. It was my best job of all time. The party moved down Hornby Street. Outside the Hotel Vancouver on Burrard Street, the crowd gathered to pay tribute to five local hotspots that were in the same vicinity. For 57 years, the Panorama Roof, a romantic dance and supper club, was located in the Hotel Vancouver. The Dell Richards Orchestra, known as the band at the top of the town, delighted dinner guests for 25 of these years. Dell introduced fellow Hall of Fame alumni Mart Kenny. All through the 40s and 50s and the 30s, too, Canada's number one band in the U.S. Across Broad Street, two restaurants flourished. Oscars, opened from 1943 to 62, was a New York style restaurant, a favorite after theater haunt, run by the colorful Oscar Blank. In the same building, the Palomar opened from 1937 to 52 was a dinner and dance restaurant that featured many top name entertainers. The Filipponi family, local club owners, took over the Palomar in the later years. Oh my lord! 
Behind me is the former Georgia Street location of Izzy's Supper Club. Izzy's was open from 1958 to 1979 and was well known for its big bands and live girly shows. On Thurlow Street, Oil Can Harry's was a trendy nightclub in the 60s and 70s, owned by Danny Basita. His mother, Ruby, worked in the day-to-day -day operation of the club. I just started working there. I walked out and I looked down around this alley over here and I saw all the police cars pulling in. Getting out with their boxes, radio. Great, I got them. They were running back to the front door. I run behind the door, I lock the door. I run upstairs and I say, Danny, the cops are coming. They can't get in, I've locked the door. He looks at me and says, you fool, we've been waiting for them. They're a half hour late. This is the obligatory raid. Open the door. <laughs> The Penthouse Nightclub and the Commodore Ballroom were the last two venues to be designated historic sites. They are still a vital part of Vancouver's nightlife. In 1947, the Penthouse on Seymour Street became a favorite late night haunt. The Filipponi family offered fine dining, live music, boxing matches, and strip acts. Ross Filipponi recalls some of the big name entertainers. The less queens, like, you know, people like Women like Phoebe Dorsey, uh, Lily St. Cyr, Sally Rand. Never, never saw anything. The way, the way she worked the fans, you never saw a touch of nude body. The Commodore Ballroom, built in 1929, is now operated by the House of Blues. Famous for its maple wood sprung dance floor, countless musical events have taken place on the Commodore stage. We had lots of fun, great parties, that over six million people had walked through the Commodore door. This building rocks, let me tell you. It's like Earthquake Bill on a Saturday night. From the BC Entertainment Hall of Fame, this is Cole Gray reporting for Plugged In. For more information on the BC Entertainment Hall of Fame, or to book a tour of the Orpheum Theatre, you can contact them at 665 3050. Okay, up next.